this is Dolly and this is Kigspooks. Welcome back, it's been a little while. Or oh, hello if you're brand new. Despite having a really strong start to my 2023 reading year, didn't carry on that way and I spent the majority of the year feeling really, really crap about my reading and under so much pressure and we're not doing that this year. We're just not. I spent months not reading when I felt like I should be reading, then kind of towards the back end of the year, rallied a little bit and then saw how much further I still had to go to get my story graph goal read and just gave up and read nothing at all in December. It was panicky, it was opportunistic, it was not a cosy fun time. And yet when New Year's Eve rolled around, I wasn't thinking about my reading at all. I was off playing D&D &D with all my friends and I came home and snuggled this one. So since New Year's I've been slowly working to reset my reading and get myself in a position and a headspace that I think is productive but mostly just fun. So it might feel a bit counterintuitive but we're going to start with how I record my reading. I set my story graph goal to one book and my page to 365 pages. I know some people would then, when they hit that lower goal, raise it. I might still do that but I'm going to see how long I can leave it at one book and 365 pages for. I think that is a real test of my restraint this year. I'm also going to be using Storygraph a little bit more functionally this year so normally I would just whack down a star rating and that would kind of be it. Now I want to write a real proper thoughtful review after I've sat with the book for maybe a couple of hours and just rushing to mark another one off that goal. And I think when I did do reviews, yes they were iconic and sarcastic, but they weren't thoughtful. Um, and I think there's a place for both of those kinds of reviews, so my story graph is going to be for the thoughtful reviews. And I'm going to keep on doing my sarky, snotty little reviews on Instagram stories and I'm going to save them all into my 2023 reads highlight. So if you're looking for a giggle and your favourite author to be slandered, that's the place to be looking. I also bit the bullet past couple of weeks and updated my reading spreadsheet. It was an absolute state. I use Notion for my reading database. I have recorded all kinds of bits of data in there but it was very patchy as to whether any books had all the categories filled, any categories filled. Um, so I went through and did a bit of a tidy. That's an ongoing process but at least now I know that every book I own is in the database and definitely page numbers are right, whether it's translated or not is right, usually the collection is right, that's probably about it. But I'm in a position now where I can at least start using that data even if it's not a perfect data set. So I took all the books that weren't on there at all, some of them were new, some of them had been on the shelves a while and did my little process and process for them. So I made sure that all the details were on there and then I also stamped them with the lovely book stamp that my partner got for me a couple of years ago now and I think I am going to be expanding this data set this year to think more about um, some fun stats that will be nice to look at at the end of the year, new releases versus backlist, country of origin, countries I've visited in reading, taking a lot of inspiration from Books and Lala and how she does her stats I just think it makes for such a fun way to analyse all of your text. You know, my other half is a data analyst so I'm sure we'll be able to come up with some pretty graphs for that. So I know I am a much more productive reader if I have some kind of theme to stick to or a loose TBR without being too strict on myself. So I've come up with a list of themes and to reduce that pressure or strictness I am going to be making reading vlogs about these themes but I'm not going to say I've got a read kind of five books in a week for that theme it's unsustainable so what I'm going to do is put together that TBR of those books and then the vlog comes when it comes I will read them at the pace I read them at and I'm going to try and be okay with not being super efficient in amongst that I still want to be reading books that I just fancy let the mood take me um, but I might not be including those in those vlogs they will just be kind of fun for me in the background maybe they'll become a vlog of their own maybe I'll be like meta vlogging vlogging of vlogs vlogger 
Um, and I also set up my TBR jar again this year. That is now up to date with every book I own. But I was starting to feel like when I was pulling books out, I just kept getting recent books, um, despite having shaken it up really well and mixed them up. So I decided to implement the Hunger Games style system. So for every year you're on these shelves, your name goes in again. And then at the start of the year, I can just put everyone in again. I've done the hard part of figuring out how many each person should have already. So there are some books in that jar eight times and those will be my Russian classics which I, I want to read but I don't want to read so catch me pulling more and peace out of that jar sometime soon I'm not going to do this as kind of I have to do one every month just if I don't know what to read next feel like I'm losing momentum I'll pull one from the jar I don't have to finish them I don't have to finish any books this year I'm going to be doing left and left right and centre if I want to on that theme of reading thoughtfully as well, I've set up my very cute little annotation buddy with some highlighters and some tabs and some pens I can use. I don't really know what I want to be annotating for at the moment. It's been an awfully long time since I've annotated a text with the intention of analysing it. So I think it's going to be a bit of a journey that we can go on together, me learning exactly what it is I'm looking for in those books, what I feel is worthwhile for me to draw attention to and record what thoughts of mine I think are appropriate to put in there and um, but I'm trying to overcome my fear of marking up books and you know treating them as a space for thought and self-development that is what reading is for for me I haven't analysed the text <laughs> since GCSE English Literature however I did a little bit of university because I did linguistics and I was looking very much at how the language of those texts worked, what it did, why those choices were made, rather than kind of overarching themes. So I'm hoping I can marry that very limited literature experience I have with that very extensive linguistics understanding and knowledge that I have and start to write some video essays. I uh, really miss writing essays. I loved it at university. I was that freak who could not wait to get another essay to write. So I'm hoping to recapture a bit of that love because I feel like I've got really stupid since Covid um, and I think our brains are a muscle and if we aren't using them we're going to lose them. So hopefully I can be building some connections in there using that brain power and hopefully those will be interesting videos for you guys and they will have kind of a linguistic feeling to them just because that's my training. Next collection of habits are all around buying books. I'm going to say straight up I'm not going on a book buying van, it's not possible for me. I love buying books probably more than I love reading books. <laughs> I'm not even going to say it's a problem, it's just a fact, it's a truth and that's fine. People spend their money on drugs. I spend my money on bits of paper. But I don't know if it's more sustainable habits around that buying of books because at times last year it felt a little bit out of control. I only want to be buying books that are sci-fi, fantasy or translated fiction. That's where my interests lie. I want to go back to that joy of reading that I felt when I was a kid and that was all sci-fi and fantasy. I really want to put those genres on a pedestal because I feel like as a kid I was so into it, I knew so much about it. As an adult I feel like I'm really lost in those spaces and I don't really have much of a voice or authority to speak on them. So I want to dig in hard this year and at the same time I don't want to lose that muscle of reading translated fiction learn more about the world, open myself up to other experiences and I feel like I don't actually enjoy literary fiction that much. Quite often I inflate the rain because I feel like if I was cleverer I would be able to enjoy them um, and I just don't want to put myself through it this year. Will I inevitably try and read the man booker? Probably it's me, I'll at least probably read a few but taking the focus off literary fiction is really important for me this year. Other buying habits I want to think about more this year are avoiding buying hardback books. I uh, 
quite frankly never read them while the paperback comes out and I very rarely read new releases ever and I think sometimes I get and I think sometimes I get swept up in everyone's talk about them Dobby I think sometimes I get swept up in everybody talking about them and really feeling that for more but I'm gonna really try and go paperback I'm also going to try and go second hand where possible and if not second hand from one of our lovely indie shops which we've got a lot of in the northeast as a last resort a chain shop like Waterstones or Blackwells um, I am absolutely not going to be buying any books from Amazon this year if people buy me books as gifts from Amazon that can't be helped but I'm not going to go out of my way to buy them if I want to buy them online really badly I'll use bookshop.org so overall I would love to reduce my current physical TBR that's the focus of the year so as much as I love using my library I would prefer to read the books I own this year um, and when it comes to things like audible credits or audiobooks from the library I will be trying to pick books I already own where possible obviously I've already got some books on audible that I don't own physicals of that's fine if I read those I've accepted that that was probably a little bit of a mistake but that's fine I think I would like my physical books and audio books to be 50 50 I spend a lot of time in the car a lot of time gaming um, so that's where my audiobooks come in handy uh, but I don't want that to overpower my physical reading because I know sometimes then that makes me feel weird about physical reading overall I've got five words that I hope will come to describe my year of reading in 2024 those are sustainable, cosy, diverse, thoughtful and fun at the end of the day it's supposed to be fun I'll be making videos when I make videos the point of these videos is to record my reading and not the other way around. I hope that you will enjoy coming along for the ride and joining me on the journey to see how I do this year with implementing these habits. See you soon.